Hello, hello, welcome. We are about to get funky with one of the world's most funkiest foods. It's yeah. natto. We got uh, Denny Manzer here, Malcolm Saunders, and special guest Eli Ross. Who yeah. is artesian craft natto maker here in Calgary? Yeah. Who's making a fine, 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 fine product? And uh, natto, wow, we've got so much to share and oh, say yeah. about natto. Uh, if, I mean, it's, it almost has a reputation that precedes it. Yeah. So we want to kind of set that straight. Um, you know, what gives natto its funk? Why that funk is so good? Why <laughs> it is a food you want to acquire a taste for? There's so much going on with natto. Uh, Eli Ross started the company uh, Kyoko Fermentation with his wife, and uh, he's going to share a little bit about that story, why natto, their special process of how they create it, and most importantly, what makes this food so good, and like I mentioned, why you want to create an, a, a taste for it. Uh, not everyone loves it initially, at least the smell. Yeah. Be fair. Yeah, or it's even, funky. Or even just the look of it, right? You mentioned you're out at market, people see it, they see like the stringiness and like, no. Yeah, it's mm. challenging. It's, it's challenging. challenging. But I find it delicious. I I don't find this funky at all. It smells amazing to me. Yeah. So the directions on the package they say stir one hundred times. That is the tradition from Japan. That is that is what is required. So let's maybe just before we get into this, let's back up right away. Uh, we got a number of people watching us here on Facebook. Um, if you're even unfamiliar with what is natto, it's actually fermented soybeans. I'll let Eli share a little bit more kind of into what it is and the history and where it comes from and then we'll dive into why it's so good for us and uh, how he came to be making it. Mm -hmm. So natto is a fermented soybean from Japan. This is a product that uses a very special bacteria, Bacillus subtilis, and we take that bacteria and certified organic soybeans and ferment them for three days in an alkaline ferment. Alkaline, very different than most ferments and very special. After those three days, we've created an amazing superfood called natto. Yeah. That's, seems very simple, only one ingredient. After that process, uh, that, that beans has been fermented and we have a vegan protein source. We have a daily source of fiber. We have a spore probiotic. Spore probiotic, that's kind of neat. That's something new. Not a lot of people have heard about spores and, and how that can work for us. Uh, it's also in this fermenting process creates a heart medicine called natto canis. That's naturally created. We don't add anything in there to do that except for the bacteria. And uh, it's quite amazing. So Denise is mixing it up, stirring it a hundred times. So with a little <laughs> of uh, the Nama shoyu, that's the living probiotic soy sauce. Yeah, raw soy sauce. And this is uh, a product that they have with the light cellar and it's organic and it's delicious. So we often pair that together. So yeah, so after we've created this amazing ferment, what do we do with it? How do we eat it? It's very sticky, it's very funky. It's got, a, it's got sort of a umami flavor. How do we describe umami in North America? Well, we describe it in, when I, when I present this to people, as a savory taste, almost a vegan cheese, if you will. And it's got a great protein source, eight grams of protein per serving, and uh, it's quite, quite delicious after you acquire that taste. Mm. So for us, it's, uh, it's part of our daily diet. We take it as a protein, uh, protein supplement, I guess, or a source of protein for us. And it's, it's amazing. It's good, yeah. It's got some interesting gelatinous qualities. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Very sticky. So the sticky business is actually one of the one of the qualities that helps the spore probiotic last in our body. So the spore probiotic, yeah, the spore probiotic is very interesting as it doesn't stop at our stomach. It doesn't dissolve there. When this bacteria hits our harsh environment of our stomach or the acid, it goes into a spore form but continues on into our lower intestine and colon. Hardest areas to reach with probiotics. But this guy gets there and he lasts up to four days. That sticky business is what keeps him in there. And so they've done studies and they've done tests and uh, up to four days so that probiotic sure can stay in there. Yeah, it is a hardy bacteria. Um, this guy, and a very unique one, and a very prolific one, actually. I've been doing some research into it. And uh, so it can actually survive boiling. Yes, it can. It's, uh, it's got an interesting quality in the fact that it can survive uh, anaerobic environment or aerobic, it, it survives high temperature, in fact it survived on a NASA satellite for up to six years. 
That's quite amazing. So there's maybe a possibility this bacteria didn't start on this planet. It could have been, <laughs> it could have got here from cool. somewhere else. And I know a lot of people making uh, koji or tempeh. Mm -hmm. um, if their temperature gets too high, those other bacteria will die off. And it's this guy, the Bacillus subtilis, that actually will survive. You'll almost get like a spontaneous natto yeah, yeah. Uh, from that. It's, uh, it, it's amazing where else you can find this bacteria. It's on a lot of herbs that I grow in my garden. It's on grass, it's on wheat, on straw. And in Japan, they actually use the straw from the, from the rice fields to make this product. That's how it was originally discovered. The story sort of goes that there was a great battle, a battle of all ages, of, uh, and the, they took a break after battling, and the soldiers were boiling some soybeans to feed their horses, and they got uh, attacked again from the, uh, from the opposite guys. And at that time, they just threw the soybeans into some, some rice straw and wrapped it up and rode their horses off into the distance. And a few days later, they opened that up, and it was all sticky and covered in this white biofilm. Yum. And, they, and they, whoever was the first to eat it was probably pretty brave, <laughs> but they, they ate it and felt so good from it. So there's the natto on our crackers. Yeah. Getting a little awesome. taster. I've only heard of natto from people that were looking for rich sources of vitamin K. Yeah. Highest food source of vitamin K, too. Yes, and not just any type of K, but specifically, as you mentioned, vitamin K2. Now, there is K1, which is abundant in green leafy vegetables, uh, but our body needs to be able to convert that to K2, which is more powerful in the body for, like, for things like depositing the minerals into the bones. And this is one of the best sources of vitamin K2. So we encourage you all to try natto in your own ways. This is a way that I feel is very approachable. On some crackers, it's great for a snack in the afternoon while you're working away mm. on the computer. Great little snack, great with some avocado perhaps. Um, some great ways on crackers. Fantastic, mm. cheers. All right, let's give it a try. Mm -hmm. ah. <laughs> Feeling that energy. Mm. You know, like something I've noticed with natto was that it's, well, in Japan, it's considered a fertility food. Mm. It's fed to young women pre conception, like to make sure they have a healthy child. Mm. But it also makes you feel a little healthy, They're healthier than normal. <laughs> So we affectionately called it the Nati Nato around <laughs> yeah. that cellar. So what Denise is referring to is that the heart medicine, Nato Kines, slightly thins the blood and dissolves blood clots in our system, but also improves our blood circulation in our body. Woo! <laughs> so with that blood circulation all working well, so is everything else. Yeah, and it, uh, it really, really does help and it really does work. So Neil, I'm really curious, how did you get into specifically natto fermentation? Like what drew you oh, to this? Yeah. Why, why, are you, why are you producing this? Yeah, you bet. So it actually all started here at the Light Cellar. Uh, it started with, with me learning about ferments, but we enjoyed this product. Um, we enjoyed this product uh, that was already here. And our great friend Tetsu from Buckwild Traditions was making this product here in Calgary. Oh, and, yeah. and it was absolutely delicious and it was organic. I have found this product in other places, but it wasn't organic. And eating organic is true to my heart and true to my, my beliefs. And so we sought, sought after it. Uh, our, our friend Tetsu from Buckwild Traditions had moved away last summer and there was nobody making this product and we felt empty. We felt there was a void and we just couldn't let it just go and not have this product. After you eat this a few times, you acquire that taste, you, I guarantee you will get hooked. Oh it's, yeah. Your body just loves the way this feels inside it. Yeah, the way it makes it feel. We were actually talking to Jeff, uh, works at Lake Cellar, he's just down at the Lake bar, and he's like, oh, he's like, it just kept coming up for me this last week. You know, yeah. his girlfriend mentioned it, and then he's walking by the cooler, and it's like, it's catching his eye, and he's like, oh, I gotta get some natto into me. And you feel the difference, and I'll talk a little bit more about that, but that's how it all began for us, is that we just couldn't find that source of organic mm -hmm. natto here in Calgary. And, the, and, and it's fresh, never frozen. Yeah, the fresh is a big difference too, because the nutrition and the vitamin K2. So freezing it destroys all of the vitamin K2. All of that precious vitamin K2 that we would just wow. love to have, freezing it yeah. destroys it. So this is 
one so, of Calgary's only fresh nattos that's that right. we get here. We, we spend a lot of time sort of researching where to get the beans, where to get the bacteria, how to make this. My wife is Japanese, she was born in Japan, and this is true to her, her heart, her history, her tradition, her family. In fact, there's four generations of very strong women in my wife's family that have made ferments, such as miso and shoyu and other Japanese ferments in Japan. And so with my wife's support, we discovered that we can, we can do this here, and we've made it, and we've made a very special product. There's a lot of pride, a lot of passion that I put into this, and we are, we are not just making any natto. We are making very, very clean and very special beans. So we, we, we strive in making it clean in the way that we source our water from the mountains. We ferment this just as much as we have to so it's not too funky, and you're still getting all the benefits and we seal our cups with a, a special seal to keep that freshness in there. So when you eat this, you know that you're just getting the most fresh, the most vibrant K2, the most vibrant soybeans you can get. And people are, people are gonna get a taste yeah. uh, at the Calgary Big Fermentation taste. Festival. Hey, Eli, you're yeah. gonna be there? I'm sampling. gonna be there, I'm gonna be sampling, we've got a special on our product, we're gonna be not That's giving it away, but very close. Come and, and get a really uh, good taste of this yeah. stuff. Yeah. It's the youngest. If you haven't tried it yet, and, and that, that, you know, if you haven't tried it yet, please come to the fermentation festival and I will be giving away free samples and you will enjoy this product mm -hmm. there quite a lot. Mm -hmm. I've got some different ways of, of sampling it. Um, I often put a little freshness in there. So a little green onion or a little avocado, some special little treats that I have planned yeah. for the festival. Yeah. It's going to be exciting. Health, everybody. To your health. I can I just finish up one of these. I can't let that go. I can't let that one go. I know, right, guys. Mm. Cheers. Mine's already down the hatch. Amazing. Mm. Cool. So Eli and Kyoko Fermentation will be at the Calgary Fermentation Festival in the Bender area. Mm. Get all your questions answered about mm. Natto. It's fascination with the funk. It's an acquired taste. I think you were already born with the you know the acquired taste. You know, it's <laughs> yeah. the beginning for me. It just it just took knowing how to use it, how to put it in that right context, and then of course being inspired by the benefits mm -hmm. um, that you just shared. Yeah. So Yeah, so I mean a few ways that we like it obviously are on the crackers, um, quite enjoy it in pastas, soups. in soups, in salad dressings, in stir fries. Stir fries, you gotta be a little careful not to overcook or heat it too much for the probiotic, but there's a lot of, a lot of nice uh, textures that can happen in there. And one way that I just sort of discovered myself is to make sticky rice and to then fry that mm. sticky rice. Oh. So that is something that I've been uh, enjoying at home recently with, with the product because the mm. stickiness does sort of surround all that rice and it comes nice and crispy after you fry it up. So delicious, mm. yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're making the knee hungry. Whose mouths are watering out there too? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, well, super excited. It's Saturday, October 19th. Come meet Eli, taste products of Kyoko Fermentation, the amazing natto. It is truly an absolute wonder food, an absolute wonder ferment um, out of this world. And it actually, literally, might be out of this it world. It really could <laughs> be. Uh, yeah. 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 We are bringing that, that history. So natto has about 930 years of documented history in Japan. And we are, we are doing everything we can to stay true to that history and bring it here fresh for you. We make it every week. We make it with the highest quality ingredients. We're making it for you guys. Yeah, so if you can't wait till the 19th, just come by the Light Cellar. We've always got fresh ones in stock in the fridge. And uh, I mean, it's probably the best value superfood possible. Uh, a little dish, which would you say is that one serving? Or oh, that definitely. That's one serving, and that's a larger serving than you'll find um, in the frozen varieties or anywhere else. We want you to, to have enough that you're getting all those benefits from it. And so uh, traditionally, they would say four servings a week to get the health benefits, but our servings are larger, and you only need three a week to really get all the benefits. But even if you just start with one and start to acquire that taste, yeah. it does take a minute to sort of, you know, do I like this? Is this right for me? <laughs> but once you get it in your body, your body wakens up. It feels alive. It feels, it feels how fresh and it feels the passion that I've put into these beans. Your body feels that when you eat this product. Yeah, my mom has been eating it every day when I, she got sold on the bone density aspects with oh. vitamin K2. Yeah. She's like, Yes, I need this and I want it. Yeah, the and highest food source of vitamin K2, and as I found out from our friend Luca today, that it's not only for the calcium in your heart, but it's also for the calcium in your penile gland and in other parts of your body and organs. This vitamin K2 could be a very, very good secret. 
about staying young. Yeah, and I mean, there's so much to cover. We Just before we got on, we were talking about isoflavones as yeah. well, right? Yeah, so the isoflavones, in fact, in our product, so iso, soy also has a bit of a bad rep. And I have to be honest, and that rep comes from non-fermented soy. So I, in my own world, I probably wouldn't eat soy unless it's fermented. But once we've fermented it, those isoflavones, those anti-nutrients, have all changed over to, to nutrients that we can absorb and isoflavones that help us. So the isoflavones are specific for, for females and for women, help to balance the hormones throughout the month and also later in life. And so and there's, there's, there's a fertility food. Yeah, and there's studies all throughout this in Japan, and it's amazing. 930 years. You believe they studied it. Yeah, yeah. for sure. All right, any kind of last words or thoughts? We've covered a lot of ground here. And, uh, so the only thing I can say as sort of an ending note is when you try not to, please, please add a little bit of the best soy sauce you can find into that product and mix it up a hundred times. That allows us to flavor the nib up, the sticky business, and get a nice flavor and taste for it. So those two combined, nothing better, nothing more Japanese than sushi. But, yeah, all right. right. Well, thank you guys for watching. All right, guys. John says, sounds wonderful. Be sure to come and get some. Yes, give it a try. All right, thanks again, you guys. Thank you. See you at the Ferment Festival. Yes. <laughs>